Yes. <laughs> oh boy. So I believe I, I got it. Thank you, Lord. I've been working on this all day. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> oh God, thank you. So we're gonna yes so we got one more minute so i praise the lord everyone get on amen and we're going to open up in prayer i'm going to start on time so i hope everybody can hear me so that that's the main thing it says my audio is working amen thank god for sister Kara walking me through all of this amen <laughs> and my husband being my audience hallelujah thank the lord praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord hallelujah so we are going to open up in prayer i'm excited i'm so excited about the word is active and live and and i'm just thanking god for chapter 10 the prayers of our lord jesus christ amen so dear heavenly father god we just thank you for this opportunity this day god that you have created for us oh god to be, God, able to know more about your word and, God, to study the mandate that you have for us, that we have so much dominion over the things that we speak in the atmosphere. And, God, we just praise you and we acknowledge you on today, God, for having the living word, God, that's active in our lives. Oh, God, we praise you and we glorify you and we honor you because without you, we cannot do anything, oh, God. And we just thank you for giving us our strength on today, God. Give us the power, God, to be able to go forward, oh God, in these times, oh God. And we just give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Well, I'm just going to let everybody know I'm Sister Phyllis. And um, I like to study the word in a way that is live. I can see it, visually see it. And um, so I may have some demonstrations for us today as I go, go along, and I'm, I'm going to not talk so fast and i like to use my hands when i'm talking but i just thank god for the honor and the privilege to be able to um, share the word on today um we're in chapter 10 the prayers of our lord jesus christ amen and um we um when studying about this this lesson it was awesome because to know the relationship or communicate with, with God is to be able to go through Jesus' his son and the things that he went through and the things that he's done for us, it just made me just rejoice and think about the sacrifices that he made for us, you know, and, and, and he did it in a, in a way of, he knows our name, you know, he's that friend, you know, and I thank God for him just knowing our names when he went to prayer, I always put my name in the midst and when he was praying that hey, he was praying for Phyllis, praise God. But the first part it says, Jesus Christ came to teach us to enforce the dominion mandate. But not just bringing God into situations, but indeed giving us the instruction to pray. Thy kingdom come and permitting us to access the keys to the kingdom of heaven that releases all the nomenclature of the kingdom into the earth. Now armed with these weapons, we no longer just subdue and resist the kingdom of darkness, but we have received power to overrule, overthrow, and destroy the kingdom of darkness. I'm going to say that one more time. We have received power over the enemy to overrule, overthrow, and to destroy the kingdom of darkness. And in Luke 10 and 19, it says, Behold, I give unto you the power to tread over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And God has given us all of that power. And we're like, what are we doing with it? You know, and it's just so much that, that he did for us. We, he gave us power, dominion, mandate over to be able to um, speak things into the atmosphere and know that he has answered our prayer amen so i thank god um it says as a living word jesus found it necessary to always be in communication with the father in order for the purposes of god to manifest and his constant communication with the father is prayer 
and prayer is a lifestyle for our Lord Jesus Christ even today. Now ask yourself, is it a lifestyle for me? It should be. And, and I thank God because in that lifestyle, we only say, um, when I wake up in the morning, God, he wants to be the first thing I think about in the morning. Because I think about when what he did for us and interceding for us. There's nothing that Jesus did without even consulting with the Heavenly Father. And, and I think he, when he went into very strong prayer, he was thinking about us. And, and that's the blessing, I think, um, um, the mandate, our dominion, uh, what we have. Because when he created us in Genesis 1 and 26, it is clear that God desires us to exercise dominion in the world since we were made in his image. We are to reflect his sovereignty in our dominion and his wisdom in our actions. And that's Genesis 1 and 26. And, and I, I took notes and I thought about one of the manifestations of the dominion mandate is to make disciples of all nations. Um, Jesus told in Matthew 28 and 19, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to deserve all that I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even into the end of the age. And so I thank God because, you know, he given us power. And with that power, I have a, I have a demonstration because we all have cell phones. And, and, you know, God forbid if we was to leave the house and didn't have our cell phone and we had to plug it in. And, and I have two cell phones here. And they're the same cell phones. But this is a demonstration that God has shown me today. This cell phone, praise God, when you plug it in, if I can get it in there, as you can see it, the percentage is going to come up, praise God. And once it's plugged into the power, it'll show what's the percentage to have that prayer, that active life. And, and once you say, God, I'm plugged into and I'm praying, I'm acting, my life is being active. But this one is 0% when you don't have a prayer life. Can you everybody see that? It's 0%. There's no charge. There's no charge. Because we haven't been charged into the, the prayer life, the power that God has given in us. And so it says it's 0%. We don't want our life to be like this. And I use a demonstration of a phone because everybody has a phone and everybody's on it. But when we haven't plugged into the mandate that God has given us, this is what it looks like. Zero percent. We're trying to get a charge, but there's no charge. That's this one. But this is what it looks like when we have been tapping in early morning prayer, interceding, and it shows where our life is when we get up in the morning, we're praying for those that people got and laid on our heart. And we say, oh God, just have your way in our life. This is what it looks like. 100% because we have that power. We're activated. It's alive in us. And so I, I use the demonstration of a phone because everybody knows that when you're talking on the phone in that communication line and you look at the battery going down, you're like, oh God, I got to charge up. But that's the same thing with our, our prayer life, being able to charge and activate and being tapped into that. Praise God. He rose up early to pray. And in keeping with his lifestyle, Jesus Christ rose up long before daybreak to pray. This empowered him to discern the will and purposes of God. He was not ready to please and follow the dictates of men, but rather through prayer. And he knew the will of God and fulfilled it. But his attitude of rising up a great while before day gave him a divine advantage over the day. And that's like when we had um, the 21-day prayer in, in Daniel. 
um, um, the 21 day for Daniel fast, my husband had put together, getting up early at 530 in the morning was a blessing because you got up before everybody else did. And you didn't have to worry about somebody calling and interfering with, with your day and things like that. No interruptions, no, no, no dis, dis, um, disturbance or anything like that. But getting up early in the morning is just like a refreshing because it's that time you can commune with God and being able to commune with him by yourself and close in a closed door in a closed room is is powerful because when you're there with him and I'm going to speak from me, you're able to communicate with him in a way that. You feel his presence. You can feel his arms wrapped around you. And I get so emotional about it because that's where I'm at in my life. Because you're in, in the presence of God. And you're saying, God, whatever you have for me or whatever you're doing, I just want to be in your will. And to be in the presence of God is fullness of joy. And I thank God. I think about when Jesus when he was praying and, and I can visually see it, you know, him having to know what he was getting ready to suffer and go through. But yet he said, God, your will be done. And that's the thing that we have to pray for us when we're praying. God, let your will be done, you know, because it's, it's just being in his presence is so much fullness. You don't think about anything. You forget about the day you forget about what somebody said or what somebody then did and what you're focusing on is just him and i thank god for for this lesson because it's just showing me the more we're tapped in to him and the mandate of power it's just saying oh god i thank you for your peace i thank you for your understanding i, I thank you for all the things that you're doing for me in my life in my 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 other my co-workers lives or even my family members and it's just a blessing it's such a blessing i, I get so excited talking about the word and, and my husband tell me to slow down but when i'm talking about him and what he's done and in, in, in the importance of his life i think about the song um we never know we'll never know how much it costs to see my sins upon that cross we will never know and that right there is for me that song that part of that song we'll never know but all we can do while we're here is the mandate that he's given to us is to be able to hold each other up and encourage one another and be the disciples that he's called us to be and because like i said we'll never know but all we know he did it because he loved us and I just keep encouraging everyone to just stay within his will and, and know that God is always there and always listening. I mean, just like he communed with his father, and he wants that same communion with us. And I thank God because I, my husband and I have been together 30 years this year. And there's no way we would have got to 30 years without communicating without getting to know one another and and that's the same thing that relationship with god just communing with him and, and knowing who he is that's the big part knowing who he is and he will never fail us and never leave us thank god i'm, I'm trying i'm getting off of the the lesson because it's so it's so good amen um back to he rose up early to pray but his attitude of rising up a great while before day gave him a divine advantage over the day. And this ensured that he would have advanced knowledge to deal with whatever he would be facing throughout the day. And he was also training the disciples to seek the Lord early. And that's the same thing with us. When you get up in the morning, you just say, Lord, guide my steps, you know, guard my mouth, guard my, guard my ears and my eye gate. And, and you ask God for those things as you go throughout the day and God will eventually reward you and show you and help you. And I thank God if we just seek him early in the morning and then he'd be like, okay, I'm with you, you know? And, and, and it's just the mission was based on two things. He stayed constant in communication with the father by prayer and he obeyed what he saw and heard in times of prayer. And I thank God because without him, where would we be? You know, without him, you know, you ask yourself, 
who am I? Without God, who am I? And I think, you know, with him, Jesus was determined and focused on obedience to the Father. And then that's like me, you know, I have two kids and, you know, you're raising your kids. You want them to be obedient, to do what you tell them to do. And that's the same with our Heavenly Father. He gives us so many provisions and give us the word to live by. And all we just have to do is abide by what he says to do in the word. And I thank God for the word. Praise God. Um, like in this part, it says, it is important for you as a Christian to spend time in the word and prayer every day, especially before beginning the day. This strengthens and empowers you to deal with the challenges of the day. Prayer is a daily necessity for daily triumph. And when I saw that part, I just highlighted it because no soldier goes into battle with only part of his armor on. And, and in this spiritual war, it is vital that we be suited up completely. We cannot leave any part of ourselves vulnerable to attack. You know, Apostle Paul had wrote in Ephesians 6 and 11, Ephesians 6 and 11, put on the full armor of God. And he also instructed us to pray always. And I, I went to Ephesians 6 and 18. And in that, Paul urged us to always stay connected in prayer, to God in prayer, always. So demonstration I used about the two cell phones, once I charged it in to, to the power source, boy, it went, it's going to 100, you know? And so that's the thing. I thank God that we can't, he allows us to put on the whole armor of him that when we go into battle, we'll be suited up and pray and be ready for the battle. And like I said, in Ephesians 6, 18 through 20, Paul urged us to always stay connected to God in prayer. And prayer is a way to be alert so the enemy cannot sneak up on us. And we always pray because of the persistence of the battle and to stay in touch with God. And another thing that Paul was referencing, as ambassadors for God, we represent his character in our lives and pray to receive the words we need to present Jesus to others. And it goes about, we need to pray and, and pray without ceasing. And I mean, every day is, you don't have to be praying a whole hour, two hours. Sometimes, like, you know, you can pray, you can be in a car and, and sitting at a stoplight and your words are just come and you begin to pray. Um, a lot of times, you know, we'll be going by on the highway and there'll be a car that's stuck on the side of a road. You can immediately start praying and saying, you know, God help them in whatever situation they're dealing with and, and no danger that, that comes before them. Just being praying for people. You don't have to know their names, but just praying for them. And that's something that God is mandating, giving us the power to be able to do while we are being disciples here on this earth, to be able to pray like he did. I mean, he, he made sure anything before he did anything, he communed with God. And that is come from relationship. That is a, a, a relationship with one-on-one, -on -one where they're in tune, one accord at all times. And, and it's so important. And I say, and, and when I say about a soldier goes into battle, he don't go into battle with part of his armor on. And so when we're in this battle where we're fighting now, the spiritual warfare, we got to make sure we got to have the whole armor on. And, and you know, we know we got an intercessor, intercessor for us. You know, Jesus is the greatest intercessor. And we know that. But it's up to us to be sure we have that relationship with him in this time. Praise God. And and I, when I was studying this, I was always seeing when Jesus went about... Um, amongst the people, he was never in a hurry. I mean, he knew where he was um, um, and where he was always going, you know? And the thing about him, he took time to, to get to know the people. And, and that, that's, that's something that we have to, as being ambassadors on this earth, when we're out, like now we're in quarantine and, and we have, you know, our neighbors, some people may, may just get to know your neighbors, but it's, at this time, able to communicate and even a, a fellowship and a time to be able to share the word with those who are around us. And this is the time that we're able to do that. And like we're being the ambassadors on this earth. And like you say, Jesus was never in a hurry. 
and he took the time to get to know the uh, the people that he was surrounded by. And um, he was always about his father's business. And I thank God for that because there's ways I was saying to pray. Um, establish a prayer reminder. And that's one way. Um, get a prayer partner. Um, that's something that, you know, I like my husband and I, you know, it's just being able to have somebody you can pray with at all times and, um, pray for those I say that you see in uniforms, pray, we keep praying for the COVID-19, um, uh, on the front line, continue to pray for them, you know, because we don't know what they're dealing with. And that's another thing when you're praying for people, you know, you don't always have to know everything that's that going on, but might just say, Lord, we just pray for covering. Lord, we just pray for peace. God, we just pray for them to have, you know, be able to go to their families. Praise God. All right. Amen. Now, when all the people were baptized, praise God, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heaven was open and the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven, which said, Thou art my beloved son, in thee I am well pleased. Before his baptism by John the Baptist, our Lord Jesus Christ was praying as he approached the water. Everyone else went to be baptized, but it was not recorded that they were praying. However, Jesus Christ was praying, and the scriptures declare that the heavens were open. And the Holy Spirit descended upon him, and a voice from heaven spoke in response to his prayers. It was the prayers that caused the heavens to be open. So the atmosphere of open heaven is critical for divine operations and manifestations. When there is an atmosphere of open heavens, there is a close communion and fellowship with God. Amen. God knows us inside and out. He knows us completely that he is aware that we are going to say before we say it. That's because God hears not only our words, but also our hearts. He listens to us not to gain understanding, but simply because he cares. He knows our needs, all of them, and he knows how to pray for us. So let that thought comfort you and encourage you to trust more completely in the one who is praying for you. Prayer is extremely beneficial to us. Knowing who is praying for us can help us receive the benefit. As believers, we must understand there is no other access to God the Father except through Jesus. As the Apostle Paul says, there is one God and one mediator. Between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. No one else is worthy to come into his presence on behalf of another. But as believers, we need to remind that we have the best advocate in the universe with the Father. No one else can defend us like Jesus. And it is out of our jurisdiction of the earthly lawyer to defend us before a righteous and holy God. Amen. And I thank God because when Satan says, look what he or she did, Jesus says, yes, but I died for this child of God. And that's something we have to remember, that although Satan comes and tries to give us doubt, discouragement, and distractions, Jesus said, but I died for this child of God. And that's who we are, a child of the Most High. And we have to realize that. And, and no one can battle spiritual warfare on your behalf like Jesus. And um, I thank God for how when he prayed, he knew what he was praying. And that's the same with us. When we pray, we have to pray in the habit of a lifestyle that this is our daily, what we daily do. Like we read the daily bread. This is what we do when we pray. Continue to pray. Prayer without ceasing. Praise God. So we thank God, you know, when we pray boldly. That our relationship with our Heavenly Father is strengthened the more we pray. And the communication we have with Him should be ongoing. Bold, bringing Him praise, but also not hesitating to present Him with our needs and the needs of those around us. 
So God wants to hear from us an honest, open conversation about the things that concern us. And like I said, God knows us inside and out. And he knows us completely that he's aware that what we're going to say before we even say it. And I thank God because he knows our hearts. And in, and in a song that says he knows my name, I thank God because without him, you know, we, where would we be? And so I thank God for even this time right now being able to be on here because uh, I don't have the video, praise God, but I guess I do have audio. And I thank God for just the time that um, being able to share and just being able to know that without him, you know, the power that he gives us, the mandate he gave in us that, God, where will we be? You know, and I think about watching the, um, just the scriptures come to life and, and think about his life and, and um, all the things that he endured for us. And I just say, Lord, I thank you because you love me enough. You love me enough to be able to stand in the gap for me, to intercede with me. And I thank God for that because right now I'm um, in the process of getting ready to have um, back surgery. But, you know, I have such a peace because I have that relationship with him. And, and I am surrounded by so many prayer warriors. And I thank God for just having people with New Life Church of Faith in my life to be able to know I can call and, and get a prayer through. And I thank God for just knowing that there will be 100% there. And I praise God because right now in the time that we're dealing with, even with the COVID-19 that we stay in that fellowship and stay um, just knowing that he, he has us and praise God that we're going to come through this, praise God, unscathed, you know, and that we'll look back and we'll be able to rejoice and, I mean, be able to shout and just say hallelujah, hallelujah, and we'll be able to rejoice and just thanking God for that day, that day when we all be able to come back together. And it's just amazing how when we're in our homes, how we're just able to sit with him and commune with him. And sometimes he'll show us, do a slideshow of our lives and show us the things that he's brought us through and yet he's taken us through. And you just say, my God, it was nobody but you. And I thank God because without him, God, where would we be? And so just thinking about the, the, the things that he interceded on our behalf and, and when he went to the cross, he said, you know, Father, let thy will be done. And I thank God even for that. Praise God. So during his 40-day fast, when the Spirit of God came upon him, after he came out of the River Jordan, Jesus Christ was led by the Spirit into the wilderness where he spent 40 days and nights in intensive fasting and prayer and returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. The scripture says in Luke 4, 1 and 2, And Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing during those days. And when they were ended, he was hungry. Beloved, even to fast and pray, Jesus never relied on himself alone. He was full of the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to lead him even into prayer. It is one thing to be full of the Spirit, and it's another thing to walk in the power of the Holy Ghost. Walking in the power of the Holy Ghost was a result of the fasting, the prayer, and then engaging the enemy. And I say that again, walking in the power of the Holy Ghost was the result of the fasting and the prayer. And that's it, you know what I mean? When we're fasting and praying, we're getting that power. I mean, that power that's activated and live, God, that we'll be able to face anything that comes against us. Because it is the Holy Spirit who teaches us to pray and what to pray for. This was Jesus' lifestyle and what made him destroy the works of darkness. And we are instructed likewise. So when doubt discouragement and distraction come upon us and we get the feeling like you know there's no hope but god said let that the power of the holy ghost destroy the works of darkness and praise god because we have the victory 
we have the victory in him and we praise God because without him taking going to the cross and having that victory over death oh my God where will we be my God we thank you and it says likewise the spirit also helpeth our infirmities for we know not what we should pray for as we ought but the spirit itself make his intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered and that's why sometimes when you go in prayer you go into your heavenly language because that confuses the the enemy because he doesn't know what you're saying but when you're communing with god it's so sacred because there he's he's already listening the minute we open our mouth he's already listening and ready to answer our prayers but it's just so um comforting to know that god is always there wherever we are that's where he is and just to be in his presence oh my god it, it makes everything else irrelevant you don't think about nothing else but just being where he is and that's the thing you know um being a part of a family like new life church of faith it's just a blessing because you know we have two churches you know and 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 then it's is powerful when we all come together and it's just glorious because it just meant that we are ready to re rejoice and fellowship and 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 just knowing that our lives, when we come together, we're so ever changed in what he's doing in our lives. Praise God. And I'm just, bro, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm so grateful for the word. I'm grateful for just having a time to be able to share and just knowing that the, the living word and that it's, it's active and alive. Praise God. And so likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself make an intercession for us from groanings which cannot be uttered. Even though he was the living word, he deployed the written word to overcome the enemy. And he overcame the enemy through prayer, fasting, and the word. After the time of intensive spiritual warfare, the angels ministered to him. And he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted of Satan, and was with the wild beast and the angels ministered unto him. And um, it is very important as a prayer is praying in accordance with the will of God. And Jesus taught that our prayer should be offered in his name. And that's in John 14, 13 to 14. Praise God. And I just thank God for being able to pray boldly and before coming before God and he knowing who we are and, 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 um, what our heart, what we have in our heart, praise God. But I'm leaving lead these words um, to encourage you that why did Jesus play such a high priority on time alone with God? And that was something, you know, every time when he was getting ready to go and um, like when he was getting ready to go walk on the wall um, to, the, to the disciples, he prayed and, and you say, God, why did he play such a high priority on time alone with God? Why? Because he knew the importance of solitude with God in order to keep alignment with God's will. And that's something we have to make sure that we have a priority on our time alone with God. You know, just making time. Sometimes we get so, want to be like, I know for me, be like Martha. Be so busy doing stuff and, and running around and everything else becomes before what I have to do with for God. You know, if I'm washing dishes, washing clothes, but then God is like, can I be like Mary? You know, just be like Mary, sit at my feet and commune with me. And that's something that I, I'm, I'm learning in this time of, of, of um, being in COVID, learning to commune with him the more and everything else can wait. But just being able to be there with him, praise God, is where I want to be. Amen. So. Right now, um, I don't know if everybody can still hear me. Praise God. I'm trying not to get discouraged by um, not having the video or live feed. I mean, it's my first time. So I'm just trying to figure out if if um, people are still there. But hey, man. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's just, you know, when Pastor Miller called me and said, Sister Phyllis, you do Bible study, I'm like, oh, my Jesus, help me, Lord. Me and technology is not, not the best. But I thank God for just um, 
having the opportunity. I thank God for just the opportunity and, and just to share. And um, like, I mean, I get so excited about the word. I get so excited about who he is and what he is in my life. Um, it's just amazing. It's just amazing, you know, and I think about how being at new life has given me more confidence and, and, and the assurance that, that God is always, always with me. And I just thank God for being that, that constant friend. It's just amazing. And I, I, when I studying this word and, and think about Jesus standing in the gap and, and I can just see him praying and, and I just say, Lord, I thank you for loving me enough to pray for me. Loving me enough to show me me and, and just loving me enough to put me with a family that, that embraces me and, and uh, my spiritual family, being with a pastor who, who, who gives the word and, and encourages us to pray. And it's just a blessing to have, you know, being in a place where people will love you and embrace you. And I thank God for that because everybody doesn't have that but my heart is full my heart is full because to be able to commune with him is just, when i go to prayer so many of your faces come before my mind and i say lord i don't know all their names but god i, I know their faces and i think about that when i go in prayer time and and be able to commune with him you just say god bless them wherever they're at Whatever they're doing, bless them because I know they're praying for me as well as I'm praying for them. But in this time, you know, in our this precious time that we have, we just say, God, thank you. And make him a, a, a Jesus, you know, a priority in, in our lives that when we wake up in the morning, before our feet hit the floor, we just say, Lord, I thank you. You know, we hear the birds singing. We just say, Lord, I thank you. You know, just get that song of worship in our hearts and, and, and just a song that you go by and i was listening to the song did um just stay by william mcdowell and to be able to be in the presence with him god i don't want to ever lose that i don't want to ever lose his his power and so those are the things that you know i'm, I'm excited about but I, i'm encouraging everyone to be able to pray from the heart and Pray the answer, not the problem, and pray with thanksgiving and, and get excited. Get get excited and knowing that when I'm when you're praying, God has already answered the prayer. And I just thank God just having that relationship and knowing who He is, you know, being a provider, you know, being a way maker. Oh my God, He's in so much, being a healer, a deliverer. And when we pray for those things, people with depression and people who are oppressed, and, and those things that people that we don't know what people are going through, but all we can say is, God, pray for them. Give them strength, oh God. And I'm just I just like to be an encourager, and that, that's who I am. But I, I like to just let people know that God is always there. He's always there ready and, and able to hear everything we have to say. And I said, you know, in the beginning it said, Jesus came to teach us to enforce the dominion mandate. And that letting us know that when he created us, he looked at us and said, it is good. And when he did that, he gave us power over everything. He gave Adam power to be able to name every living creature. And, and he given us the power to be able to tread over the serpents and, and be able to stand, you know, in the gap for those, do you know, that don't even know God, they don't even know who he is, but we have a relationship with him to be able to share that. And I just thank God that he entrusted us enough with the word, the living word. And I pray that, you know, as we go throughout the remaining of, of this time that we have and, or what we're dealing with in our homes and, um, and our families, that we just be continually um, be who God called us to be. Continue to be who he called us to be, loving, you know, bearing the fruits of the spirit. And I, I thank God, you know, because, you know, we're being tested and tried, but I thank God for just having the confidence that, um, that we understand that we should ask nothing that would tarnish the good name of our Lord. But Jesus taught us how important abiding in him and his word, abiding in us, 
are to our answered prayer. And the closer we walk with him and the more we know and do his word, the more our prayers will align with his will. When we keep God's commandments, doing what pleases him, we gain confidence that he hears and answers our prayers because we ask according to his will. And that's it, asking according to his will. And, and it's just being able to say, Lord, I thank you because it's a lifestyle. This is a lifestyle that I, 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 I'm enjoying. You know, I'm enjoying the journey. And I always say, I'll let nothing separate me from this love, this, this life. Let nothing separate me from this. And so God, right now, I just, I just thank God for just being able to have a moment and a time to be able to share um, with you all. Because I say, even with the difficulty of the, the uh, video, praise God, my husband was trying to help me out. And we tried, tried to do the test runs, but praise God, we, we, we thank God. And I, I see what Pastor Miller goes through when he be on here, but praise the Lord. When, when all else fails, we thank God for his power. We thank God for, you know, like I guess say it is important for you as a Christian to spend time in the word and prayer every day. And especially before the beginning of the day. And this strengthens and empowers you to deal with the challenges of the day. And I say prayer is a necessity. And, you know, when I go back to say that we are soldiers in the army and being a soldier, we're, we're going to fight. And when we're going to fight God, we're going to fight the battles that knowing that God has already, we already been won, but we fight them with prayer and it, it, prayer is activated in our lives. And I thank God how we get the instructions that we always stay connected to God in prayer and um, prayer is a way of us to be alert so the enemy cannot sneak up on us. And I thank God for this lesson, praise God, because um, being a prayer warrior, um, an interceder, an intercessor, it, is, it takes a lot. It takes a lot. But in that, we just say, Lord, we thank you for your strength and, and, and um, just knowing who he is, praise God, in our lives. And I give God the glory. And I give all the praise because, you know, we, we have a savior who accepts us the way we are, but loves us too much to leave us that way. You know, and, and that's why I thank God, you know, he gives us a holy makeover. And, I, and every day when you wake up, you say, Lord, renew my mind and, and give us a refreshing, praise God, of just being in his presence. And that what happens when you're in his presence. He gives us a refreshing, a renewing, praise God. And I just thank God. I just give him the praise. I give him the glory. I give him all the honor because, I mean, it's to him um, we live and move and have our being. Praise God. And I just thank God because he's an awesome God. He's a mighty God. He's, he's just everything. And to me, he's just so much. And and I'm just so grateful. I'm, 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 I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. You know, because where would I be without him? And it's just such, you know, when he wraps you in his arms and, and you know everything is going to be okay. And I just thank God. I thank God for this time of being able to talk about what prayer is and even what it means to me. You know, I thank God. I know I'll go off, go off on a, a, a tangent because it's hard to to relate how how I'm, I'm feeling because I get so filled up just thinking about what he did and what he's done and what he's yet doing and, and the many things that he's went through for us and how he's yet loving us and showing us how to be the example that he set. So I'm yet full. I'm so full. I'm so full. I'm so thankful and I'm so grateful. Um, and I just want to encourage everybody, just keep praying for me and um, my family and just, and I'll keep praying for you all too, but it's just amazing, you know, how God it has us at this time to be able to be in that secret place. And I think about, you know, Psalms 91, you know, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty and just biding under his shadow, his wing. Oh my God. I thank God for just being those, finding that secret place in him that place of comfort, that place of rest. And when things you feel like you're overwhelmed, but God said that secret place of the most high shall abide, just abiding under the shadow 
of the Almighty, and he is the Almighty, 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 and he knows everything, he sees all things, and we just thank God for being who he is, you know, and, and he's, he's omnipotent, you know, he's holy, he's righteous, and I praise God, because I can, I can go on and on about who our God is, and, and what he's yet doing, but I just thank God for just being saved in these days and, and just knowing who he is in these times and praise God and being able to be a witness to other people, to be able to share the good news and, and what we are learning about, you know, and, and sharing with people that who feel like there is no hope, but we know a God, we know a God who provides all hope, all peace, God. And we thank you all strength. We know he's that God. He's that God. And like it's always says, here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're our God. Forever lovely. You are our God. And I thank God. I thank God for who he is and what he's doing. Praise God. And to begin to worship, to worship him, to worship him, to worship him. So I ask you all today, praise God, just to continue in the early morning to praise God to when you rise up in the morning, just give him all reverence and all praise and thank you, God. But I thank God for this time. Amen. I thank God for this time. Praise God. I thank God for your patience. That's the most of all. I thank you for your patience. Praise God. And I just thank God. And at this time, we'll close out. Amen. And, and I just thank God for loving us, you know, and continue to, to walk with us. Praise God. And I just thank God to keep to continue to praise him. And Oh, it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. And I thank God for just having a place to be and to come and just share. Praise God. I may not be able to see everybody, but I know you're there. Amen. So I thank God and I'm going to pray out. Praise God. To Heavenly Father, God, I just thank you, God, just for your power, your anointing, God. I thank you, God, for just being able to feel your presence. I thank you for being able to feel your presence, oh God. I thank you for being able to feel your presence. I thank you for always listening. I thank you for always listening. Hallelujah. I thank you for always listening. I thank you for protecting us. Thank you. I thank you for being a provider, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. God will never know how much it costs. We'll never know how much it costs to see our sins. But oh God, we thank you for doing it for us. Oh God, we thank you. God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you. God, we thank you for loving us, God. God, we thank you for protecting us, oh God. Hallelujah, we thank you. We thank you for this time, this time to be able to, God, to learn more about you, oh God, just to praise you and to reverence you, oh God. And we'll glorify you, we'll magnify you. Oh God, we thank you for the sacrifice, for your only son that you gave to us, oh God. God, we thank you for the sacrifice. And for God, we thank you in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. I thank you all, and I love you all. I love you all. And continue to pray for us, God, as my surgery is on June the 9th. But we know that God is with us. Praise God. Amen.